Uh, let's get started with our last presentation for tonight. We want to get done on time. And uh, I'm going to introduce myself tonight, it looks like. And you guys know who I am. I'm Tom Kolb. I'm an extension horticulturist for North Dakota State University. And I have to say, I've had the honor of working all over the world in my career. I've worked in Africa and Asia and Latin America and in several states of the Midwest. And I have seen the power of seeds. And I think the first step to having a great garden or a great crop is to have great seeds because with the best varieties, you're going to lead to higher yields. You're going to have fewer diseases. You won't have to use pesticides as often and you can have the best tasting vegetables. So tonight, let's talk about the best varieties for North Dakota. All right, you know, when I was a kid, I loved seed catalogs. Some kids read comic books, I read seed catalogs. And you know, my favorite was the one from Burpee Seed Company. And every night before I went to bed, I would open up the pages and I would just see these beautiful vegetables. Like here's our pepper page. I would see all the, the colorful peppers and I would just dream of my garden in the summertime. But as I grew older, I learned to appreciate more than just pretty pictures. And, and, and now my favorite seed catalog is the one from Johnny's Selected Seeds. Uh, Johnny's is an aggressive, award-winning breeding program with some outstanding varieties. But what, even if you don't like the varieties or you don't wanna buy seeds, I think it's a great resource for gardeners. Cause like here, if you look at their pepper page and you see, not so, not so pretty, but I especially like what's on the left-hand side where they have all the directions on how to plant the crop, like how to be successful growing peppers. And I think that's what Johnny's strategy is, is that they want to, they want to teach you, they want to empower you to have a successful pepper crop so that when you're successful, you're going to keep coming back for their seeds. And if you just look closely here, they have, they got all kinds of information about the type of soil. Here's how you grow the seedlings. Here's some tricks about giving it a cold treatment to get more flowers on your plants. Here's how you transplant it. You know, here's how far apart. Here's the bugs look out for. You know, I always keep the catalog. I got the catalog right here on my desk. I, I always keep the Johnny's catalog at my desk to help answer gardening questions in the springtime. Another great catalog that I like is the Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. And heirlooms are full of uh, diversity and full of fun stories. Like here's a radish page. And you see like just um, amazing types of radishes. You can see the ones that look like uh, watermelon. You can look like uh, the ones that have like green rat tails. You can see radishes that are like as big as volleyballs. It's just so fun to look through and see all the different kinds of vegetables available. And maybe just try a few every year that's different. Those are, just a, those are just a few seed catalogs. I could give a whole talk about that, but we're not here for that. But on your handout there on the back page, we have a list of seed sources and you can contact, those are those uh, uh, internet addresses. You can just type in them and request a free catalog from all those seed companies. And if you do that, I would encourage you to get on the ball right away because you know spring's coming. And there is a shortage of seeds out there this year because of COVID. And also there's processing delays this year because like some seeds, it can take over a month to get your seeds because of social distancing in the warehouse. So if you're interested in ordering from a seed company, get on the ball right away. You know, one thing about a seed company is that uh, everything in a seed catalog sounds good. But not everything's good for North Dakota. We're a very, um, it's kind of, we have extreme conditions here. And so that's why we started the North Dakota Home Garden Variety Trials. And in our trials, we believe that to find the best varieties for North Dakota gardens, we should test them in North Dakota gardens and under the management of North Dakota gardeners. And I've had the privilege of working with about over a thousand gardeners in our state, a thousand gardeners in our state. 
And here's just last year, the numbers that we had. We had gardeners at 369 sites, 369 sites. And you see like, like some of the green counties are the ones where we had a lot of people, like let's say Burley County had 54. And, but even the yellow counties, we had one to three and all, all, almost every county, we had at least one gardener represented. So what I'm talking about tonight, these are the varieties that perform best in the gardens of North Dakota. And, and I just have a, a few personal opinions too, but these are the opinions of the gardeners. And here, here the way it works out. Like what we do is we have, let's we have a seed catalog, and you can choose what you want to test. So let's say you want to do the green bean test. I'll give you two packets of green beans to compare side by side, and then you plant them, you grow them, and then you report on them. And you, we would just want to know simple answers: which one germinated better? Which one was the first to produce? Which one gave you the most produce? Which one um, tasted better? And which one was healthier? And finally, we want to know which variety do you recommend for gardeners in North Dakota? And from that, you know, here's their, here, and they show off their results. Here's a girl showing off her successful pumpkin trials. Last year, we had over 1,500 of those trials submitted their results. 1,500 last year alone. And that information goes to, to our publication that's a handout for you tonight the one about vegetable cultivars for north dakota these are the winners in north dakota gardens when we look for a great friday we want something that's early because frost is too unpredictable here and anything that takes more than 100 days might not make it we want our varieties to taste great and that's why we that's another thing we asked them to tell us which friday tasted better and we want varieties that can resist diseases naturally, so we don't have to use pesticides. We want a productive garden, and we want a garden that's adapted to North Dakota. I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the winners in our trials. I'm gonna start off with tomatoes, because that's a very popular vegetable. And then we'll, we'll go A to Z, asparagus to zucchini, okay? And it, we're gonna go rapid fire here to, so I can get as much information to you as I can. Tomatoes are very popular and it's so many different tomatoes, so many fruit colors, so many shapes. But I would encourage you, besides considering the fruits, look at the vines. There's two kinds of vine types of tomatoes. One is the determinate type and the other is the indeterminate type. A determinate type is compact. It stops growing when the plant sets fruit. It just stops. And then you don't have to prune it. You don't even have to trellis it if you don't want to. Usually determined types are early, which is great, and has a concentrated yield. And concentrated yield is great because Jack Frost, we never have that long of a yield of tomatoes because we get an early frost. Indeterminate vines are tall and they keep growing until frost. They have to be pruned and trellis. Most varieties will give you a larger fruit, not all, most, and then some, they usually give you a more flavorful fruit, the indeterminates, because there's always new healthy leaves producing sugars for the fruits. These are some of the most popular varieties in our state. Early girl, and, and that I indicates indeterminate. People like it because it's early. Celebrity, a determinant, I think is one of the most reliable tomatoes you can grow. It resists cracking and resists a lot of diseases. Big beef is the best beefsteak variety because, and it tolerates cool temperatures, which we often have in the summertime. Mountain Fresh Plus is the number one tomato in the Midwest among growers, but I, I don't see it in very many garden centers. If you see it, give it a try beautiful mid-size quality tomatoes. Super Sweet 100 is a very popular cherry. And if you want a canning type, the Roma or San Marzano are very popular. But you know, one thing about tomatoes, we all have our own personal preferences. And here's one that and I, like, I like sharing my ideas with gardeners because gardeners shared ideas with me and taught me. And People told me, have ever tried an orange cherry tomato? And I had never until a few years ago. And I said, okay, I got it. I'll try it. And 
they're they're wonderful. They're extremely sweet. Sun Gold and Sun Sugar are tremendous tomato varieties. A big problem with uh, cherry tomatoes is they crack so easily. Juliet is a little bit larger and it's a, it has a cross with aroma. So it's about an inch. It's about an inch now and it's elongated. It doesn't crack and it's very meaty. It's an award winner. It's very delicious. Give it a try. Speaking of cracking, that brings us to heirlooms. Heirloom tomatoes are sort of trendy. But personally, I think there's a reason why heirlooms are heirlooms. And that's because we moved on. We've made progress. Like, I'm not going to go home tonight on a horse. I'm going to use a car. I've made progress. And now with heirlooms, they're not as productive. They're not as reliable. They're more susceptible to diseases. They're more susceptible to cracking. But, and these are all generalities. But one thing about heirlooms is they do have special flavors. And that's, that's a good reason to try them. A strong trend in breeding now is try to combine the best of both. Take an, make a variety that has the taste of an heirloom, but make it more reliable, more resistant to diseases, and more productive than an heirloom. And this is a classic case, the Chef's Choice Tomatoes. They came out five years ago. And I've never seen a series of any vegetable get as many awards as a Chef Choice tomatoes. Chef Choice Orange came out about five years ago, and I know many of you are going to try it this year. This is Chef Choice Bicolor. There's Chef Choice Black and Green and Red. They come out with a new one every year, but this is an uh, outstanding award-winning series. Another a new variety that that we haven't tested yet, but looks really promising is Buffalo Sun. It has the ribbing that looks like an heirloom, but look at that marbled pink tissue inside. It's supposed to be very delicious and not mushy at all. That's, that's worth a try. This is not a tomato. Actually, this is an asparagus berry. And I know I can tell by this that this is a female plant because it has fruits, right? With asparagus, there's males and females, okay? We generally prefer the males because what we're after is we want spears. We don't want berries. In fact, berries are bad because they draw energy away from spear production and berries drop to the ground. And when they drop to the ground, the seeds create more asparagus plants and your bed gets congested. So for years now, we've been recommending the all male lines from New Jersey. I call them the Jersey boys. Jersey Knight, Jersey Supreme, Jersey Giant. These are almost all exclusively male and they're very productive. But now the bad news is we're hearing that the, the company that propagates the Jersey Boys is going to stop. And so we got to find an alternative. And it looks like the variety that's going to come to the rescue is Millennium. It even has a higher percentage of male plants. It's even more productive in the long term than the Jersey Boys. And also it emerges a little bit later in spring. So you have less damage to a late frost in springtime. So get to know Millennium Asparagus. Beans, we've tested so many bean varieties and I hope you've all tried purple beans at one time because when you cook them, they turn green and the kids just love it. We gotta do anything we can to trick kids to like vegetables. Bush Blue Lake 274, that is the standard. It's at every garden center and it does well in North Dakota. Um, it produces good quality beans and has a, a good harvest through the summertime. But, and we test it every year, but it doesn't wow anybody. And so when we test it, usually it, it loses the contest between what we, we compare it to. Like last year, we, we compared it to Annihilator and Annihilator was preferred by 69% of our gardeners. A lot of these varieties have a darker green pod, a little bit more slender. And the last one, Antigua, is a new variety. It's an organic variety that did very well in our trials last year. If you have a raised bed, Antigua may be a good choice for you because it has a compact habit, only gets about 18 inches, and it's upright. The bean that dazzles people is Crockett. That's the one that we get like 90% recommendations. That's the one that, that really jazzes up people because it is a, it's a filet bean, 
dark green, slender and crisp and super productive. Crock it, try that and you'll never go back. Our filet bean trials are more popular now than our standard bean trials because once you try a filet bean, you won't go back. We do carrot trials. This is a classic Chantenay carrot, a big thick one that does good in a, in a heavy soil. And it's a classic garden Nantes carrots. We test lots of kinds. For Chantenay on the right there, you see Kupar is an organic variety that does very well in our state. Hercules is another winner. For the Nantes, Goldfinger always does well in our trials across the state. Navel is a new organic variety we tried last year. It was outstanding. You see seed catalogs where they offer purple and red carrots. They're supposed, they're higher in antioxidants, but also they're higher in bitterness. And most of our trials with like purple vegetables don't go on like purple tomatoes or purple carrots. They're too bitter. People don't like eating them. So even though if they're more nutritious, you don't eat them. So what's the point? Purple haze is a mild tasting purple carrot and it's the best of the purple carrots. That's about the, it looks good at least. <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> Lots of sweet corn out there. And every year the super sweets become more dominant in the market. I remember when I was a kid, every night I'd go pick sweet corn, like let's say a hundred dozen or 200 dozen, I'd throw in the truck and I'd head down to the Minneapolis farmer's market. We, this was a normal sweet corn. I knew when I went to the market, I had to sell every ear that morning because the next day that corn would just be starch. But now with the super sweets, they're much sweeter and they hold on to their sweetness longer. Another, the one drawback about super sweets is they're so sweet that their kernel seed is all shrunken up. It's small, so it's not vigorous. So you need to wait a little bit to sow the seeds so the ground warms. And then also look for varieties that say, germinates well in cool soils, good cold, cold soil vigor. That makes a difference. One thing in our trials, we generally do not offer treated seeds because there's a lot of kids in our trials and I don't want them to get all that pink stuff, all that fungicide on their fingers. But we do offer treated seeds for corn because we have much better success with getting a good stand. The best American dream is a, came out a few years ago. It's an outstanding corn. The best early corn is sweetness. Both of these varieties are reliable and they have sturdy stalks that can hold up to the North Dakota wind. Burpless cucumbers. Again, this is a, this is a type of vegetable that once you try it, you don't go back. And this is one of our most popular trials every year. Burpless are just so much better than standard straight eights. They're earlier, they're more productive, they resist diseases better, they have no bitterness, better seed quality. And a very outstanding variety is summer dance. The one problem with burpless is you can't pickle them. That's where a pickling variety like homemade pickles comes into place. That is our always our winner for pickling cucumber. Uh, people like its productivity and the quality, the crispness of its cukes homemade pickles. Don't forget snacking cucumbers. These you harvest when they're only like four inches long. And they're, again, they're, they're burpless types, they're bitter free. Muncher is a good variety. This year is a new variety called Green Light that we're really looking forward to testing. Green Light, it doesn't even need bees to pollinate. It's a seedless cucumber. Look for that. I know I'm moving ahead. I, I want to get all this information to you. Let us look for varieties that can take the heat. Butter Crunch is a classic and it's at every garden center. It does great in North Dakota. It can take the heat. But I would encourage you to try a crisp head or also called a Batavia type of lettuce. These are the most heat tolerant lettuces and they have very crisp leaves. These are these get our these get super high ratings. And Muir for a green uh, crisp head is a tremendous performer. 
melons, it's, it's hard to get melons to ripen on a regular basis in our state. And so more and more, I'm, I'm believing in starting seedlings indoors. Athena is the classic, it's the standard in the Midwest. Aphrodite is about a week earlier and it's, it does better in our trials than Athena, although Athena does well. Up in the north, you need something ultra early. Goddess is the best early high quality melon. Also, I would encourage you to try a melon, a Galea melon. They're earlier than cantaloupe. And I like trying Galea melons, melons because I can't buy them at the store. I can have a unique taste experience. And Arava and Passport have like a tropical flavor to them. Again, they're early. That's what it's all about for melons. Best watermelon was is Sweet Dakota Rose. It was made in, in North Dakota and it's, it's reliable, has a nice about 10, 12 pound fruit. And one of our gardeners will tell you it's the best tasting watermelon they ever ate. And probably because it was harvested when it was just fully ripe. Peas, the one that, that always win our trials is Lincoln. Lincoln is productive. Lincoln is a great freezer. It's easier to shell. Lincoln's a winner. The best snap pea every year, Sugar Ann. Sugar Ann because it's early and absolutely sweet and delicious. Both these varieties grow on short vines, about 28 inches. You don't have to trellis them. Okay, kids, it's fun growing pumpkins with kids. And here's a couple of my kids from a few, many years back, about 10 years ago. They grow in neon. Neon is the, is the easiest to grow pumpkin in North Dakota because it ripens two weeks before every other one. It turns orange in the summer. It looks beautiful in the summer. And it has compact vines. It won't take over your garden. This is a surefire winter. You can really build up a lot of confidence in your kids when they can grow their, they see their pumpkin success. But I also know about kids, they like big pumpkins. Now you can get those giant pumpkins and the problem, but the problem is they're ugly. They're like beige and they're all lopsided and they take too much work, I think. You gotta water them all the time, feed them all the time. They need a blanket on their skin so that it doesn't get sunburn and stay soft so it can keep expanding. That's way too much work for most of our gardening team. Our team likes big moose. Big moose, you plant the seed and then you just take care of it, no special care at all. And then you come back before the frost and you see these big 50 pound bright orange pumpkins. Big moose, easy to grow the best big pumpkin for North Dakota. Other ones that are good, large marge and early giant. These are about 40 pounds and they have a barrel shape for carving. Early giant, very early for the North there. That's a great one to try. Spinach, you know, Greta talked about growing spinach in spring. Um, I've never grown spinach transplants, but I have grown space. This one always wins our sp spring trials because like Greta said earlier, is the problem is the spinach can't take the heat and it wants to bolt. And it also related to the, the longer days. S space has the most, the longest extended harvest, juicy leaves and they're smooth. Our gardeners like smooth leaf spinach because it's easier to clean. For spring spinach, space is the hands-on winner every year. Uh, the most beautiful vegetable in the garden, it's gotta be bright lights, Swiss chard. It, it belongs in a flower garden and it'll still be, it'll, it'll be a showstopper. It's so vibrant, even in a flower garden, it's beautiful. Recommend you harvest it earlier because it can get a little bitter Swiss chard, you know how that goes, but just for looks, bright lights is a winner. Let's wrap it up with a little squash here. For winter squash, there's lots of types out there, but we can talk about the squash that North Dakota introduced to the world. In the 1930s, we brought buttercup squash to the world. And a lot of people think it's the best of all squashes as far as flavor. If you've got a big garden, Burgess is the standard. It's, got, it's kind of viney, but it's very early and productive. If you need a compact plant, Bonbon bon is the choice. And uh, there's a trend now for winter squash is mini 
winter squash. These are mini, mini butternut squashes. And this trial is more popular than our standard butternut squash trials. Butter squash uh, is a good one. And so is butter baby. These are just little ones that you cut in half and you share with your spouse or your friend. Last thing, I know nobody respects zucchini. I really feel for this vegetable. Nobody respects it because it's too productive. You know, I think I always think we should honor zucchini, not ridicule it. If you if you if you're going to plant zucchini, let's make it count. Let's keep the harvest going through fall. And to do that, to make that happen, we need to find varieties that resist powdery mildew disease. Cash flow has been a strong performer in our trials. And last year, a new variety came out called Green Machine, and that kept pumping out the varieties all the way into the fall. Green Machine is a real winner. Okay, I wanna thank uh, all the sources of the photos for our presentation. And also just put a little note here is that everybody's welcome to participate in our trials. Again, we had 369 families last year and it keeps getting bigger and we're, we're soon gonna be shipping out the seeds for this, this uh, season. And there's our website, everybody's welcome to join. Even just, it's a fun kids project too. So there I'm going to invite any questions that people may have. How can he keeps, how can I keep seeds before throwing away is the question. Uh, one, generally speaking, keep them cool. That's the most important thing. So, you know, the best thing is put them in a refrigerator and most seeds will stay for three to five years. Can you eat big moose? Yeah, it's a pumpkin. Okay, what about, the, I have a question about beets. What about beets? We test both red and golden beets. Again, I, couldn't, I can't cover every crop, but generally speaking for the, for the beets, the, the best flavored beets is Merlin. Two good, two very good, uh, a good all purpose beet is Red Ace and Eagle. Those are both very good. Um, for golden beets, Touchstone Gold is a fine performer. Okay. And Detroit Dark Red, if you if you want a, a cheap beet seed. The thing, it's a not, it's not a hybrid, Detroit Dark Red, so it's not as uniform. Okay. Do we have? Do I have any experience growing shishito peppers? I've never grown a shishito pepper, but I'm going to this year is the question. What do, what do I recommend about yellow tomatoes? Um, you know, again, tomatoes are so subjective. I've never done a trial with yellow tomato. It, it's not, it's, I know it just wouldn't be as popular, but the one I have grown personally is uh, the yellow pear tomato. Yellow, and it came from Fargo. Yellow pear is, um, it's a giant bush, really giant, and it's loaded with these little tiny pear-shaped, very mild. It's, I used to live near an Amish community and yellow pear was the one they used for their preserves. So if I had to grow a yellow one, that's the one I would grow. Okay, more questions. How long are seeds good for? It, de it depends on the, the the vegetable, most vegetables are good for about three to five years or even longer. It depends if you gotta keep them cool and dry and out of direct light. Um, some seeds you want to get new seed every year, like sweet corn, it helps to get new seed every year. Uh, lettuce, most lettuce varieties, you want fresh seed of that if you can. Can Canadians participate in our trials? Yes, we, we always have a couple, um, participants from Canada, and uh, they do an outstanding job for us. We, we allow people from um, adjacent states, even, even sometimes we have old NDSU alumni like from Pennsylvania or Iowa who want to participate, and we let them play with us. Um, and we'll use their comments, but we won't use their data. So, but Manitoba, Saskatchewan, you're welcome. What do I recommend for a pumpkin for baking? Okay, that's a good question. I would, I would, if I had a, for eating purposes, I think the best pumpkins are actually squashes. You know, that's uh, like for pumpkin pie and stuff. Um, squashes are usually used for that, not pumpkins. Like Libby's pumpkin mix is a, is a type of a butternut squash. Um, 
I'm trying to think, New England is an old fashioned baking type. On the Bush Blue Lake 274, what does that 274 stand for? That's a great question. <laughs> I don't know if I could guess what the plant breeder put out, made a cross and put out about 500 different, different rows, different, different crosses and 274, row 274 was his favorite or her favorite. That's usually how that goes. Are these presentations recorded? Yes, these presentations are recorded. They're being recorded right now. We put them all on the Spring Fever website. We archive them. You can watch presentations for the last, ever since the first Spring Fever, six years ago. And, and with the help of Scott, and I wanna thank Scott for his help tonight, we'll, we'll try to get these recordings um, online for you within a couple days. Can a gardener use hybrid variety seeds to save? Um, you can, but the problem is the hybrids, when they cross with one another, you will have, the children will not be exactly like the parent. They're, they will have some outcrossing. So you'll see a resemblance, but you will not see uniformity. So generally we, we do not save hybrid seeds. For example, from a pumpkin, right? Yeah, hybrid pumpkin. Um, you're going to get all kinds of pumpkins from the from saving those seeds. And the other thing is, some pumpkins will will cross with squashes, so that will add a little even more diversity. And that that's also a bee pollinated crop, so you know often we have to uh, isolate a pumpkin variety from several hundred feet, like 300 feet from any other pumpkin crop to prevent the bees from mixing up the pollen. So it's kind of not so good of a, it's kind of, don't expect good results with that. Um, what about celeriac in North Dakota? I've never grown it. I've always been tempted, but I've never done it. So maybe somebody else can answer that. Um, can you trellis cucumbers? Yes, you can in a raised bed. That's a great idea. That's what, that's a great idea to do it. And there's strategies and like the, the raised bed books and all those books, how to trellis a cucumber. You trellis a cucumber, you'll have the straightest, most beautiful fruits ever. You also get the vines off the ground. You have fewer diseases and better wind movement. You'll have a much healthier plant. That's a great idea. Uh, are ground cherries popular with local gardeners? Generally, no. <laughs> I'm interested in spinach, it, and it become a, it can become a weed too. Um, how does spinach grow? Uh, spinach grows from a rosette, kind of kind of like lettuce, as you mentioned there. I've I've never grown arugula. Sorry, I can't answer that. How do you sign up for the trials? You go to the website on your handout, the last the last slide, or even within within there. We got the slide there. Just sign up right there. You can download the catalog and you can order your seeds. We, we offer online ordering or you can mail in your order. Again, I'm one of those guys who's waiting for my seeds from the seed company. That's been over, it's been five weeks for a couple of my seed companies. So I can't deliver them right away. But as soon as that, I get the seeds, we're gonna be shipping them out. What is the best pumpkin for eating the seeds is the question. Um, there's an old variety called Lady Godiva. You want to have a pumpkin seed that's hullless, hullless. It doesn't have the outer coating. Um, there's another variety, Kake, K-A-K-I. Kake uh, did well. We tried it one year, but you know what? Nobody wanted to do it in that trial, so we just gave up on it. Do, I, do we have white pumpkin varieties? Yes, we have white pumpkin varieties that we recommend. The big one, the best one is polar bear. It gets to be about 30 to 40 pounds. It's pure white and it stays white. Some of these white varieties turn grayish or, or uh, uh, they get a peach color towards the end. Polar, right, polar bear stays white. And there's also lots of little ornamental ones like Casparita that really did good in our trial for ornamental types. Is there any vine that shouldn't be planted with cukes? No, there's no vine that shouldn't be planted with cukes. Uh, I'm not sure what would be the problem that we're concerned about there. Melons and cucumbers will get the same diseases. They'll get the same uh, pests. So maybe you could, if just for sake of uh, keeping, keeping, you might want to, 
uh, keep them apart from one another so they don't become like a hot spot of, let's say, cucumber beetles. There's a comment about celeriac. It's awesome in Fargo. It handles wet areas of the garden very well. It's tricky to start though. And he plants the variety, brilliant. Thank you for that answer. Okay, those are the questions. When, where's the best place to purchase the varieties that you recommend? You know what? The, you know, the answer is, um, I used to go through all the seed catalogs and list it down, but we don't have to. You just go to Google. Like, let's say you want to have big moose pumpkin. You just type a big moose pumpkin seeds and pops up 10 companies that sell the seeds. But that list of seed sources on this on the back page of our recommended cultivars, that that covers a lot of quality varieties. And I would I would go, when you're done tonight, go online and ask for all those catalogs for free. What are potatoes that are high yielding and resistant to potato beetles? There's no variety that's resistant to pet potato beetles. Um, there used to be GMO varieties that, that resist it, but we don't do GMOs in our variety trials. Um, just, we just don't, it's rarely offered in a seed catalog and our, I, we just don't wanna mess around with that. I'm not, I'm not against GMOs personally, but we, I just, we just, it's too complicated. Um, you know what, as far as potatoes, our, 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 our highest rated potato is called Purple Viking. Purple Viking is from NDSU, developed in the 60s. It is a, a beautiful purple pink skin, all marbled, so beautiful. Pure white, snow white flesh or inner flesh, great for baked potatoes. It resists drought and has good yield. Purple Viking. Is a, is, a, is and then of course you know you got the the standard uh, red norlin is a great uh, early red um, look for varieties that resist scab disease that's our that's the biggest problem we seem to have in our state um, what else we got here yeah beware of pumpkins and gourds in the same gardens yep they they will cross together and then but it doesn't affect it, it doesn't affect this year's crop you can if you plant a gourd next to a pumpkin the pumpkin vines will produce pumpkins they won't they're no they won't be affected by the gourds maybe that hit with the question with the cukes but the seeds will be the seeds will be affected the next year if you save the seeds but the pumpkin vine will only produce pumpkins it won't be influenced. It doesn't matter who its neighbor is. It's going to plant. It's going to be pumpkins, but the seeds may have male pollen, and so the next year is going to be interesting. Um, have I ever? Uh, love zucchini. We've got a zucchini lover. Good. I love it. Um, is there tomato varieties that have less seeds for people? Um, you know what, I would experiment with, I don't know of a, a seedless tomato, maybe look at some of those, look in a catalog for greenhouse types. Um, but actually, there's blossom set, there's chemicals you can spray on tomatoes that can help reduce the number of seeds inside the fruit. Blossom set, I would look for that. Um, what's the best pumpkin for making blachinda? I have no idea because I don't know what blachinda is. Uh, what white skin watermelon is used for pickling? Oh, you mean white? You mean white flesh? If it's white skin, I don't know. There's a white flesh watermelon called Cream of Saskatchewan. Um, it's very interesting, but it's uh, it has such a thin rind. It just it it explodes in the garden very easily. But that's uh, Cream of Saskatchewan. It's an interesting variety. Okay, I think. Uh, are there variety trials in Montana? Uh, you're in Eastern Montana. Um, Eastern Montana. Hey, we always have a few Montana. We have a couple Montana gardeners in our tribes. You're, you're welcome to join us. That's we, we you know, because you're you're similar. We just don't want to take, you know, data from like uh, Florida or something. Because who cares about what's the best variety? For Florida, we want to know what performs good in North Dakota and similar uh, varieties. There's a recommendation for the Prairie Road Organic Seed Company. 
in a Fullerton, North Dakota. That's an outstanding seed company, and they they have a lot of uh, they have a lot of it's an organic variety. So those are old. Those are um, that's like Sweet Dakota Rose that I mentioned. Their other most famous one is Uncle David's Dakota Dessert Winners. When uh, it's a buttercup squash, it has great taste. Okay, I think. Uh, let me see my time here. Okay. We're past our time, and I, I thank everybody for their participation tonight. I can, I'll stay to answer other questions, but I want to get you out on time. Um, thank you, everybody, for your participation. Um, we're going to do it again next Monday, next Monday, starting at 630 Central, and we're going to be focusing on woody ornamentals. We're going to get an update on that emerald ash borer. See what's going on with that. We're going to learn about the best maples for North Dakota. And we're going to find out about how to grow roses in North Dakota. So we'll see you all next week. Tell your friends. Everybody's welcome to participate at the forums. Okay, everybody have a good night. Mm -hmm.